Hi, I'm Wendy, and I'm a compulsive overeater. Hi. Um, I was a very normal, cute, adorable child. This year in particular, I've come to realize had a huge impact on my eating. I don't know if addicts are born, I don't know if they're created, but what happened to me in this year of my life did not help <laughs> my addiction in any way. My parents were separated that year. It's the first time that I ever saw someone hurt someone that I loved. My dad hit my mom and she fell on the floor. My, my mom had to get a job. She was a stay-at-home mom and she had to get a job and so we had to go into daycare. And when I was in daycare, the babysitter's son, he took me to a friend's house and that friend molested me. And so what those three things taught this little girl, you can't trust the people that you love. You can't trust anybody else, especially men. And you're not safe ever. That little girl grew up really fast. She decided that she could be the only one that could be trusted. And um, that's how I lived my life for 40 years. Got good grades. I was a good kid. I didn't get into a lot of trouble. I was mercilessly teased in school by the other kids about being fat. After school, I would come home. My typical routine would be to um, eat until my mom got home. And we didn't have a lot of good healthy choices, not that I would have chosen that anyway. Um, I, would, I would eat whatever was there. I mean, I would get the chocolate chips out of the refrigerator. If there wasn't anything else, I'd take bread and I'd make toast and I'd pour sugar over the top of it. And I would literally eat and watch Scooby-Doo until I passed out. And that's what I did every day after school. When I finally got out of school and I went to college, I had probably the most three fun years of my life that I can, can think of. It was just a great time. I met people that were like-minded and just had a good, fun time. I met my husband um, then. I was 19. I, I thank God for that, too, every day because he's, he's just a, a, a great person. He's been a blessing to me. I went away to Mankato. And I just kept gaining weight because I was trying to make straight A's and I didn't have any friends. And Like I said, I went on my first diet. I went to Weight Watchers when I was um, early 20s and I had awesome success there. Fixed my problem, no big deal. I started gaining weight just as soon as I quit going to Weight Watchers. I've gone back to Weight Watchers. It's been so many that I really do not have a count. When, after I got married, uh, continued to, to gain weight. I had a bout of very serious depression. Um, I had not decided to give my life to God yet, even though I had always believed in God. I just, I thought he was, I kind of put off on him what my dad was like. I loved my dad, I love my dad today, but he's just not all that present. And so I was like, God's like that decided that it was time for us to start thinking about having a child. We, we tried for a good year, um, finally got pregnant, and um, it was amazing because right before that had happened, right before I got pregnant, I started going to the church that I go to now, and right before, and um, made a decision that I was going to live differently and to try to follow him. I miscarried the baby. I blame myself for that. I was pretty sure it was because I was fat, because I didn't deserve it. A long time then again before I got pregnant again, about a year, I, just, I lost that baby too. Proof positive that this is not a willpower problem. At 225 pounds, I decided that I was going to run 
and I was not going to just do a 5k which is like three point whatever miles I, I was going to do five miles and it was going to be straight up a hill and I, I made myself do that and I made myself do it multiple times to prove that I could do it before I had to do it because I didn't want to lose face and I did not stop running I, it took me an hour and I did it I do not lack willpower I lack power I think the thing that has been the best that's come out of this is that I realized that that was not my fault. I decided that we were going to adopt a baby. I was terrified. I didn't want to do that because, you know, who knows what you're going to get. I'm filling out the papers that I got pregnant. I still had this mind, you know, and um, topped out at about 300 pounds, both of my pregnancies my old pattern just like when I was a kid sit on the couch shove food in my face as fast as I possibly could usually it was high sugar something um, until I pass out so what brought me here to core I had gone to um, Girl Scout camp with my daughter Grace she wanted to go to horse camp and the whole time in my mind I'm like panicking before going there because I'm like number one I'm scared of the horse number two I weigh 275 pounds I'm probably gonna hurt the horse and so I, I didn't know what I was gonna do about that so I just kept thinking about it and just kept going with the punches until I had to ask the question when it was absolutely time <laughs> to get on the horse I'm like how big can you be to get on the horse and they're like, eh, probably two, 225. And I weighed 50 pounds over that. <laughs> so I was like, forget it. And so Grace was really upset because I couldn't, couldn't ride with her on the trail ride. She had to go by herself. And I said to her, I said, Grace, I'll fix it. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to Metafast. I'm gonna lose some weight. And I could not, I could not do it. I could not eat that food. I could not go on that plan. I could not eat it. And I had told myself going into MetaFast that if this did not work, I was going to have surgery. And so I decided one night I was binging. I was looking, looking on the internet and uh, for food addiction programs as I'm there. <laughs> and uh, um, I found this. And nothing has been the same since. I did not want to stop eating sugar. I sat right there in that chair and bawled the day that we said goodbye to food. <laughs> I knew what that meant coming here. I, I knew it meant that I was going to have to give up the one thing that I used to cope with everything. And I was afraid that I was going to have to sit and white knuckle it for the rest of my life. I had some kind of lesson I needed to learn. And that's why it wasn't fixed the way that I wanted it to be fixed. But what I came to realize was that God wanted to be the fix. And um, it was a huge blessing for me to be able to come here and to be able to meet people that also are struggling with the same issues because people do not understand that you cannot do that it makes absolutely no sense it makes no sense to us why would it make sense to anybody else why you can't stop doing that and so this reminds me of who is in charge and it does take work you have to you have to do something it's a program of action you have to allow it to work and you have to believe that it will. And it can, it can, people get better. God has taken a lot of that obsession away from me. And this has, that's really all I ever wanted in the first place. And that's what I really needed. We get the opportunity to be different. He's helping me to do it different. So there's a lot of hope in that. It's pretty exciting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.